Okay, folks, so I just finished recording a huge long 30-minute segment on adaptive control for um, nth order ordinary differential equations, and unfortunately, the entire video was blurry. Uh, it turned, I did this entire derivation on the board, and so um, here are my board notes for this entire derivation, and honestly, I was using this brown marker, which was kind of faded out, and I wrote so much on this that it's just, it's... Uh, it's pretty nasty, um, everything that's here. And actually, I'm looking at the board, and it looks like I forgot to take a picture of the uh, last board. So, I mean, at this point, like, everything's just, like, totally messed up. So what I'm going to do, I actually um, derived this last night and did it in my rocket book. And so I actually have these notes in my PDF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this here and show you how to create an adaptive controller for an nth order system. And then I'm going to simulate this in Python to show you um, how that works. Um, so if you recall in the, uh, last video, um, I think it was, let's see, was it nonlinear controls, adaptive control? Was it this one? Do, 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 do. View on YouTube. Yeah. Adaptive control example. So in this example, we had MX double dot equals U. Okay. And the, the formulation for this, I personally didn't really like. And so I like this derivation a lot better because it's a much more general derivation and it applies to everything. And so in this case, you have a general nth order ordinary differential equation. So in this case, you have coefficients a n, a n minus one, all the way down to a naught, which are supposed to be unknown. So you don't know what any of the leading coefficients are. Y to the n with a parenthesis is the nth derivative, okay? So in our case, for this example, mx double dot equals u, the nth derivative is two, so n is equal to two. And so our unknowns are m, zero, and zero. You'll notice that there's no x dot term and no constant stiffness term. And so those, those parameters are actually zero. And we're assuming we don't know those. So our vector of unknowns is a2, a1, a0, which is basically m, a1, a0. And I leave a1 and a0. I could have made it c and k, you know, like a damping and a, and, a, and a spring stiffness, but I just left it as a1 and a0, okay? We're doing a model reference adaptive controller. So if you don't have a model reference in there and you just are doing the adaptive control law, it's actually called a self-tuning controller. And so like it, it's very similar to like the auto-tune controllers that you see on Pixhawks for drones. Um, but in this case, since we're doing a, uh, let me turn my light on here. Um, since we're doing a, a, a model reference here, this is called an MRAC or a model reference adaptive controller, which basically says I'm trying to get my state to go to my model and I'm trying to get my, um, estimated parameter to go to my actual parameter, okay? And so my model here has some coefficients alpha n's, and in our case, I'm using a second order reference model, and so here are my alpha coefficients here, okay? We don't actually use this later on, and so this is just here to sort of simulate the dynamics of my reference model. Remember though, and this is what does matter, is that E, and this is a terrible notation in my opinion, because in my last video, they used tilde for the difference between the state and the state and the model state, but they're using E this time, which I actually like more. I'm not sure why they did it the other way around, but basically E and then all the way down to the nth derivative of E is basically your state minus your model state, okay? And so all of those, just keep those in your back pocket. So in our example, we have two. We have E, E dot, and E double dot, which is X minus X model. Now, in order to do a, um, in order to design our controller, what we do is we use some feedback linearization techniques. So what we want to do is we want to choose a control law that has this pseudo controller in here and then all of our dynamics over here. And so if we plug this U back into this equation over here, what you'll notice is that you're going to get an AN V is equal to AN Y N derivative. And what you're left with, if all the coefficients looked right, is you would get the nth derivative of Y equals V, your pseudo controller. Um, so all of these, these terms here on the right, like a n minus one and y to the n minus one derivative, that's gonna cancel with this term here. If your a hats, right? Remember this control law has a hats in there. So if your parameters were the same as your actual states, your dynamics would completely cancel and your, your plant dynamics would match your model uh, reference dynamics. Now, if you look at this here, and look at these coefficients, you basically have a n hat, a n minus one hat, a not hat. And what you can do is you can put that in a vector a hat. So up here, um, a is just the actual parameters. So a hat in a vector like that 
is all of the um, coefficients in a vector. And so if you make this new parameter called lambda, where lambda is equal to v y n minus one derivative y, and unfortunately I didn't write it down on here. Maybe I wrote it down in my board notes. Um, yeah, I did. So lambda here, c is right here, is v y n minus one derivative all the way out to y transposed, it's a column vector. And so what you get is you basically get that u, your control law, is lambda transpose a hat. Now, this pseudo control law, in order to make sure you have stable aerodynamics and basically do some pole placement, you create the standard feedback linearization uh, closed loop aerodynamics where you put x model double dot minus, and I guess here's the general, you do uh, the nth derivative of y model minus all of your errors so that when you, if your parameters are exactly the same and you substitute this in, you get your closed loop aerodynamics that look like this, e double dot plus k1 e dot plus k naught e. And so this basically says like in this example, this is my control law, m hat v a1 hat x dot a naught hat x, right? So that's exactly the same as this. And if all of my parameters were correct, if I knew my parameters perfectly and I substituted this in, my x double dot, my second derivative would be equal to my pseudo control here. And then if I plug this in and I've subtracted everything over, I would get stable aerodynamics here, okay? Now, if I take this equation and put it down here into matrix form, this term here is lambda and this term here is a hat. And so I can multiply those together and basically get lambda transpose a hat. There should be a transpose right there. Cool? From here, we need to get a tilde where a tilde is a hat minus a, because I want a tilde to go to zero, right? So in order to do that, what we first do is rewrite our closed loop aerodynamics. Now remember, I wrote my closed loop aerodynamics here, but that's if my parameters are, are, are known. And if I are not unknown, I have an a and hat everywhere subtracted by a, and so I have a tildes everywhere, and so I need to see how that shakes out. So in order to get a close-up aerodynamics, what I first do is I take the plant dynamics. So I'm going to take these plant dynamics. Oh, that's the reference model. I'm going to take these plant dynamics, and I'm, sub I'm going to subtract A and V from both sides. And so if I subtract A and V from both sides on the left, I'm going to get A and Y nth derivative minus V. And then I'm going to move all of the other dynamics over to the right-hand side. And then I'm going to get U minus A and V. Now remember that U is equal to um, A and hat V. And so if you look at a n hat v minus a n v, that is actually a tilde v. And since I moved everything to the other side, I actually get lambda transpose a tilde, which is exactly what I get over here. So on this right-hand side, I just get lambda transpose a tilde because of the way that I moved everything over. On the left-hand side, if you recall what v is, v is x model dot minus all of this stuff, and so the minuses cancel, and what you end up getting is you get the stable aerodynamics on the left. Now this is good news because what it means is that you basically have your aerodynamics equal to lambda transpose a tilde, and so you can put this entire thing in matrix form. So if you make x your state vector with e at the top and then the n minus one derivative of e all the way on the bottom, you can set this equal to x dot equals ax plus bu, but it's not BU because you don't necessarily have a control input for your aerodynamics. What you actually have is you have um, your aerodynamics is equal to lambda transpose A divided by AN, and that's why you have a divide by AN here. But then you have to subtract off all of these terms here, which is your closed loop aerodynamics. So that's why your A matrix here, the bottom row, so the top row is just going to be an off diagonal of ones your bottom row is just going to be the negative of your, your Ks, your gains, your, your closed loop coefficients, your PID controller for your pseudo control. And then B is just zero and one because you're only hitting one with your um, aerodynamics here on the bottom. Okay. And so you have A, you have B, you have C, but what this really means is that now what I can do is I can make a Lyapunov function. Now, why can I make a Lyapunov function? Well, by putting this in this form, a is, sta is, clo is stable. And the reason why A is stable is because I'm the one, remember where these K coefficients come from. These K coefficients come from this pseudo control law and I, the control system designer, get to pick those um, coefficients. And so since I get to pick those coefficients, I get to decide where my poles are and if that's stable. And so in this case, A is stable. And since A is stable, 
it'll satisfy the ricotta equation, which I can take for I can use in my favor when I go down to my Lyapunov function. So my Lyapunov function here, I'm going to use a n x transpose p x plus a tilde transpose gamma inverse a tilde. Now this is always positive because I make p positive, and this is always positive because I make gamma positive, and gamma is just a, di uh, a diagonal here. Okay. If I take a derivative, I'm going to get an x dot transpose px and then an x transpose px dot. And what happens is when I plug in x dot, I'm going to get um, a term here with some a's. And if I grab the a's, right, if I take a x transpose, I'm going to get x transpose a transpose. So that's going to be a transpose p plus p a. And the a transpose plus p a, that satisfies the Riccato equation, which is equal to negative q. And the Riccato equation says that if a is stable and p is positive definite, Q is also positive definite. And since it's negative Q, it means it's negative definite, which means that this term here, if I substitute this in for negative Q, this is always going to be equal to zero. Or sorry, negative, this is always going to be negative, less than zero, which is good news because that means V dot is going to be stable. The problem is that when I also take this derivative, I get this B term here. And this B term, if you look at it, combines with this B term over here, and you just get 2A tilde transpose lambda B transpose PX. And so you get this term here. When you take a derivative of the a tilde transpose gamma inverse a tilde, you get two terms that combine together and you just get this 2a transpose gamma inverse a tilde. Since I know that this term is always going to be negative and I can factor out a 2a tilde transpose, I just need this term to be zero, which is really good news because that means that a tilde dot is just negative gamma lambda b transpose px. And that will work for any nth order uh, system that you have. For our system, a tilde dot is equal to a hat dot minus a dot. Now a dot is our actual parameters. If we assume that our actual parameters never change, then that means that a tilde dot is equal to a hat dot. So that means I have m hat dot, a one hat dot, and a not hat dot is equal to negative gamma times lambda times b Right, remember lambda is v x x dot x. Right, I have I have lambda uh, I have lambda defined over here. It's v and then all of your derivatives, and so up here I have v and then x dot and x, and then v and then b. Um, this is my error dynamics is just a two state system. I just have e and e dot, and so b is just zero one, and then I have p which is a positive definite matrix, and then x which is like I said is e and d dot. If you carry out the matrix multiplication for all this, you get these three control laws here, negative gamma one, P two, E dot V, okay? This will, so this equation here, A tilde dot, will work for any nth order polynomial. Everything down here is just for our specific case, okay? So if I open up Tony now, and I open up, let's see, if I go to, I'm out of instrumentation, nonlinear controls, and I do adaptive control unknown mass, Okay, here is my system. Here are my, here's my derivatives routine. So I've got x, x dot, x model, x model dot, m hat, which is one of my states. And I'm just, I'm just gonna assume that I know what a1 and a naught are. I'm just assuming they're zero. Um, I thought I wrote a different code to do this. Did I not? Thought I did. Let me just take a minute here and, and see. Well, oh, there's a lot of codes in here. Quadcopter, adaptive. Hmm. Um, let's add them in, just for kicks. Okay. So I'm going to do m hat, and then I'm going to do a1 hat is state 5. A2 hat is state six, okay? And then um, I'm gonna use the same gamma for each one, just because. And so I'm gonna have my actual mass, my lambda. What is lambda for? Is that for my model? Do I even use that? I don't think I use that anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna have zeta, omega n, that's and bm. Those are for my model reference dynamics. Gamma is my parameter that I'm, um, that I can use to tune my adaptive control law. Here's R, here's X tilde, which is technically E, so I'm gonna do E dot, okay? And then I've got my model dynamics, I've got my control law, 
um, two zeta omega n and omega n squared. So I'm using that. Um, oh, yeah, I'm using this because I want my pseudo controller to match my model dynamics. I can make it do whatever I want, but I'm just going to make this match my model dynamics here. Okay. Um, U is then M hat V. Is that right? I thought U. Okay, M hat, it's M hat V plus A1 hat times X dot plus a naught hat times x, okay? Okay, so that's a1 and a naught, right? Because a2 is technically m hat, okay? And then x double dot, so these are my plant dynamics, which aren't, which my controller doesn't actually know. x double dot is u over m. And then I don't need the this here. So m hat dot, now if you notice in this equation down here, um, gamma is multiplied by p2. P2 is a constant and so is gamma. So I can just do negative gamma E dot times V for M hat dot. A1 hat dot is negative gamma times, what's the difference? It's E dot times X dot. And then A0 hat dot is negative gamma times E dot times X, okay? And so I'm gonna get X dot, X double dot, X model, X model double dot, M hat dot. I'm gonna get um, a one hat dot and a not hat dot. Okay, I'm simulating for 200 seconds. I'm assuming that my model knows exactly where I am. And then I'm gonna assume that a hat one, wait, oh gosh, a zero hat zero is, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna assume every single one is one. I'm gonna assume I have no knowledge whatsoever. And then I do a zero hat zero and a one hat zero. Okay, and then I've got x out, m, m hat out, and then I want to plot a zero hat out is state out of all comma five, and then a one hat out is state out all comma six. And then here's my model, here's my tracking, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plot t out a zero hat out and then plot t out comma a1 hat out. And hopefully my plant state will match my model dynamics and my tracking error will drop to zero and my mass will go to five and then a0 and a1 will both go to zero. Now I was hoping it was gonna be done simulating x tilde dot Unfreaking believable. So this is E dot and this is E. It wasn't even running. Sometimes it hangs. Okay, this is kind of neat. So XM, so oh, I'm in the way. I'm gonna put myself in the center here. So XM is an orange. So that's my model, that's my reference dynamics. And then in blue is my actual state. So you notice it's you notice the good news is it's sta it's stable for all time, even though you don't know what those parameters are. Um, it's stable the whole time. So this is what I was saying about like the self-tuning controller is that you can you can throw this on any system and it'll it'll at least guarantee stability, right? Um, so this is really good news here. If we look at our error dynamics, that clearly drops down to zero, right? So we're our tracking performance after 200 seconds dropped down to zero. But what about our state estimate? So it looks like our our one state went to five, which is good. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like our other two states did not drop to zero. Oh, uh, it looks like the, the orange one is dropping to zero. I, I got my axes wrong. And then the green, green is not. And it looks like it hit, it looks like it's in a stable limit cycle. And I want to say that's because it's like got like perfect tracking performance. And so this like sign of 4T, I, I wonder if we should say like if T is less than 100, do this um, else, you know, switch it up. Come on, you're supposed to auto tab. Let's do r equals np dot cosine of 2t. Let's see, let's see it converge on that. Okay, so that looks really good. Yeah, see, there's a little blip here. 
Meh, still didn't work. Um, I wonder if we just need to converge faster. Let's try 30. Let's see if it doesn't, if it blows up there. That looks good. Whew, that looks amazing. Yeah, I guess I just didn't get it. It's possible that there's just too many unknowns, right? Um, what we could do is we could artificially set um, a not hat. I'm actually curious. If we set the initial conditions to the right value, are they going to move from there? Yeah, they move a little bit. But if you look, the mass goes perfectly to five, which is kind of neat. And what we can actually do is if we just zero out, if we, if we, if we zero these out. So if, if, we, if we reduce the number of unknowns that we're trying to estimate, boom, this goes perfectly to five. That's amazing. Like we, we perfectly estimate the mass in like 10 seconds, right? So if you're flying a, and, and again, I mean, even if you're flying a big drone, right? I mean... It looks like the, uh, you don't even really, you, your tracking dynamics are, are almost perfect. I mean, this is amazing. I wanna, I wanna test this on a real drone. I mean, this is, this is awesome. Okay, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, hopefully this, uh, this is a good video. Um, show you about adaptive controllers for um, an nth order ODE and uh, how to simulate it in Python. So uh, with that, I will bid you adieu. Have a good night.